On this next section, we're going to go through checking the starter motor. You're going to want to check the starter motor, obviously, if you have problems with either slow cranking or no cranking, but you'll go to the starter motor only after you've checked the batteries and other connections. First thing we're going to do when we're doing the starter motor check is to make sure that the engine is not going to start. In this case, what we have done is remove the wire that leads to the fuel shutoff solenoid, as you can see on the fuel injector over here. So the engine definitely will not start. Another thing that we can do in this particular case is we could trip the air, emergency air shutdown. That way, even if the unit did get fuel, it still could not start. Now that we've done that, we're going to first check and see what our total current flow for the starter motor is. Now to find out what the requirement should be, uh, you can either find that in the service manual, or if it's not in the service manual, and sometimes it may not be, uh, it's a good idea on a nice day when everything's running really well, take your current meter that you're going to be using, the inductive current amp meter, and check the system when it's running well. If you know what it's supposed to be when it's running well, then it's going to be pretty easy to know when it's not. Okay, so in this case, we're going to take our meter and we're going to hook to it what's called an inductive amp meter. The nice thing about this device is you don't have to make or break or do anything to any connections. All you got to do is just loop this thing over either the positive or the negative cable. You're going to set your meter to the volt position. Turn this on with the, in this particular case, it's a green button. And on all of the units, you're going to have a zero adjust right here. You're going to adjust your meter to read zero. At this point, we're ready to crank. Now, we know from prior experience that this unit should take approximately 220 amperes. And so now we're going to crank the engine and see what we get. As you can see, the average current that this starter motor required was about 240 amperes, actually 239. Again, the starter motor is spinning the engine over very, very rapidly, and we're pretty happy. Now, if we had some problems, they're going to be in one of two areas. Either the starter motor is going to require less, significantly less than 240 amperes, or it's going to require significantly more than 240 amperes. If it is less than 240 amps, what we're going to try to do then at that point is, again, check all of our connections both to the starter, through the positive here, and from the starter on the negative back to our battery bank. And we're going to do this by doing a voltage drop test. We will show you the voltage drop test in just a moment. One other area we're going to test is right here between where the positive cable comes into the starter motor at the solenoid and this other connection down here where the power from the solenoid actually goes into the starter motor. There's a little disc inside here that makes and breaks up to, uh, up to approximately a thousand amperes. And after making and breaking this, uh, this current flow time and time and time again, it gets fairly arced up. So after a while, you may not be getting a good connection here. Again, to test that connection, what we're going to do is called a voltage drop test. Now, according to the manufacturers, our voltage drop test should be somewhere around four-tenths of a volt max on a 24-volt system, two-tenths of a volt max on a 12-volt system. So let's do the test. What we've done is we've removed the inductive amp meter from the voltmeter, and we put on just two test leads. They're in the common and the voltmeter lead position right here. Our rotary switch is in the DC volt position. And this is a very, very simple test. All we have to do is go between the two points that we want to test. Again, this is the motor terminal. The one up here, let me reverse these. This is the motor terminal. 
This is the battery terminal. What you should see now is system voltage, which is, again, tw approximately 27 volts. And that's okay. Remember I said we were looking at about 0.4 volts, and that's what we should see when the engine is cranking. So, if you could crank, please. Thank you. As you saw there, it was 0.17 approximately, or 175. That is much less than the 0.400 volts that we're allowed to have according to the manufacturers. So in this particular case, this disc in behind the uh, solenoid right here is in fine shape. This particular kind of a test, the voltage drop test, can be used anytime you think you might have a bad connection. Again, on a 24 volt system, across any single connection, we're looking at approximately four tenths of a volt max that we'd like to see. On a 12 volt system, it's going to be half that or approximately two tenths of a volt. Alrighty, again, if it's a, a low current failure, we're going to be looking at connection issues uh, from the batteries to the starter motor and back to the batteries. If it's a high current failure, such as instead of uh, drawing the approximately 240 amperes like it is, if it was drawing a lot more, four, five, six, seven, however many hundred of amps that it happens to draw, then we're most likely going to be looking at an issue within the starter motor itself. And at that point, it's a fairly safe bet that the starter motor is going to need to be replaced. Before replacing the starter motor, make sure you either mark all the wires and cables that are coming off this starter, because as you can see here, we've got several of them. And you don't want to put the starter wires in the wrong place. It can cause grief all the way through your system. So either draw a wiring diagram indicating where all the wires are supposed to go, or just simply label the wires as you take them off and make sure that when you take off any of these major cables here, wrap them in electrical tape or otherwise secure them so that there's no way they can touch each other or touch ground. Okay, what we're going to do now, of course, once all the testing is done, don't forget to put all the wires back on and properly tighten everything. Now start the engine and you're on your way.